Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Christ Church. Lovely to see you all here. You've braved the elements. It's a bit cold. I think people will be arriving even as we speak because um, they'll be scraping the cars, won't they? <laughs> oh no, I can't scrape the car. <laughs> so, welcome. Uh, we're going to dive straight into our opening prayer, and very soon we'll be singing some lovely songs. So, thank you for the, the band and technicians making that possible. So let's say our, our opening prayer together. Let us pray. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are here among us. You are welcoming, welcoming us into your presence. You delight in your people. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We give you praise. We pray that we may worship you this morning. We may love you with our hearts. We may bless you with our lips and with our lives and know your blessing in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. We're going to say our prayer of confession as we come into God's presence. It's good just to lay down the, the burdens on our hearts, uh, acknowledge those. So let us say this prayer as well. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. And so may Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. I'm going to invite you to stand and sing. Our first song is The King of Love. Uh, after that, our young people will make their way out. We'll say a prayer for them, uh, but we'll carry on worshipping. We've got a few more songs. So let's just give this time uh, to God in our hearts and in our voices as we praise him now. Thanks. Let's stand and sing. Thank you.
thank you, Jesus, that you are the king of love, Lord. Who else in history could we say that about, Lord, who gave their life for love, who, who touched sinners and set them free and brought freedom and purity and goodness into their lives, who healed the lepers, Lord, who brought salvation to the world, Lord. We thank you that you did that not by might nor power, but by the Spirit of God. You brought love to each one of us. Lord, we pray for our young people as they go, that they will know that love, that have fun, that enjoy fellowship, that enjoy learning about you. Bless them, bless the leaders, Lord, and bless us too. Lord, we're one family uh, in your presence. Pour out your love upon us this day. Give us your joy and your blessing in the name of Jesus. Amen. So please, we'll carry on worshipping our youngsters and our young people and their leaders will make their way out. Thank you.
Lord, be glorified in our lives, be glorified in this world, Lord. Come, Lord Jesus, by your Spirit, come among us, pour out your Spirit upon us, upon this needy world, Lord. Be glorified, we pray. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Please be seated. We're going to have some more prayer. We'll perhaps sing that again during the ministry time after the sermon would be nice. Um, I forgot to do the candles. <gasps> I've still got to do it. <laughs> Who would like to do it growing up? It's your chance. Because <laughs> I forgot to do it when the kids were here. Come on, wave. Come on. There must be someone who'd like to do the candles. If not, I'll ask Dolly to do it because she's coming up to do the reading. Come on, Dolly. <laughs> <laughs> you get to do the candles as well. Oh, Tim wants to do it. Ah, oh, can you do it together? Come on, Tim. And, and <laughs> we do it together. You do one, and he can do one. Right. You going to go first? Yeah. Which one are you going to do? This one. That's a good one. Look at that. Perfect. Come down this side. I think. I think you just need to stand this side because the wick's bent. That's it. Perfect. Hold it up. Whoa. Yes. Well done. Good. Do you want to do one? We can do another one and then Dolly do the third one. Lovely. And now Dolly's turn. Tim, can you give it to Dolly? It's her turn now. Okay. Can you do it together? Do it together? Yes, Don't please. touch it. What are you doing? Are you blowing it out? <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. Dolly, do the next one. Do it together. Yeah. Oh, Go on. Yes. yes. So the first one was for the fathers and mothers of Israel. The second one was for the prophets. And this one, I'll ask you in a second. I'm sure you all know. Thank you. Well done. Round of applause for these two. Thank you. So in just a second, Dolly's going to read. But who is the third candle for? See? John the Baptist. So our reading is about John the Baptist. So take it away, please, Dolly. Our Bible reading today is taken from John chapter 3, verses 22 to 30. After this, Jesus and his disciples went to the Judean countryside, where he spent time with them and baptized. John also was baptizing in Hanon near Salim. 
because there was plenty of water there. People were coming and being baptized since John had not yet been thrown into prison. Then a dispute arose between John's disciples and a Jew about purification. So they came to John and told him, Rabbi, the one you testified about and who was with you across the Jordan is baptizing and everyone is flocking to him. John responded, no one can receive a single thing unless it's given to him from heaven. You yourself can testify that I said, I'm not the Messiah, but I've been sent ahead of him. He who has the bride is the groom, but the groom's friend who stands by and listens for him rejoices greatly at the groom's voice. So this joy of mine is complete. It must increase, but I must decrease. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Dolly. Bless you. Because I pray, Lord, as we think upon your word, Lord, we thank you for John the Baptist. Lord, we, we thank you that he bore witness to Jesus and prepared the way. And may we have that same heart in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. I was uh, looking at this passage in the week and uh, I chose it months ago, really, uh, thinking about John's call. John was called of God, a clear call to prepare the way for the Christ, the coming Messiah. And he was faithful to that call. He's a great example of someone who he saw his call and fulfilled what God had laid upon his life. Brilliant example. Um, but as I was reading it, particularly this week, I had a conversation with uh, Bart Woodhouse. Wave if you know Bart. He's known to a few people. I know. He, he works at the Methodist Church as a kind of pioneer outreach worker, evangelist, does alpha courses, helps start churches, things like this. Uh, and we were just chatting and praying. Uh, and he, like me, has got a heart for revival, for seeing God move and bring people to faith and seeing the church revived and renewed. And it just stirred my spirit and um, he prayed for me and uh, he actually, in his prayer, said, I pray that Richard will be a, a voice calling in the wilderness. Said, oh, that's good because I'm preaching on uh, uh, John on, on Sunday. That, that touched my heart, that is. I thought, right, I'll, I'll give it a hearty preach, I thought. And... Um, but when he started to talk about that, and then reading this passage with fresh eyes, it, it struck me that this is actually a moment of revival that's going on. Because what's going on in this little scene that we just read is that John's out, he lived in the desert, but he's found a place where there's plenty of water. And it's named in the Bible, um, in that passage. And people are flocking to him. You know, it said the word flocking to him. The crowds were coming. They, they, they were hungry for God. They were coming, they were getting baptised. Um, uh, and actually the, the historian if you might have heard of Josephus one of the ancient historians of the period talks about this people flocking to, to John um, and then on top of that we discover in this passage which we don't read elsewhere in the New Testament as far as I'm aware of, of people coming to Jesus for baptism now not in our passage but in the next chapter it says that actually verse chapter 4 verse 2 in fact it was not Jesus who baptised but his disciples uh, so out in the desert also, Jesus' disciples are doing some baptisms. I'd love to have been a fly on the wall and see how that worked, what, what was going on there. Uh, we don't know much about this, except for this little passage. Um, so there's even more people, and in fact, it says there, someone comes up to John and says, everyone is going to him. So there's a kind of, a, people are starting to gather around Jesus as well. Now this is interesting because this is actually before Jesus' ministry is really fully launched. Because in, in Mark, chapter 114, where it says Jesus went and proclaimed the gospel and preached the kingdom of God is near, it actually says, after John was put in prison, he went and proclaimed. Well, this passage specifically says, before John was put in prison, this was happening. So this is a kind of a prelude to what we read of in Mark's gospel and some of the other gospels. And yet crowds are coming. They're coming for John, and now some are coming for Jesus. In, and there's just a hunger um, I don't know if you've ever experienced that. I don't think we've experienced that much. I, I when I was at university, saw a period where the Spirit was poured out and a lot of people came to faith. We had a mission, and I think we had about 70 converts in a couple of weeks. And the context of that was, was a place where people were really experiencing God. 
uh, the Christians were already experiencing God. Uh, and so the mission kind of came very naturally because they had something to testify about. Uh, and God worked. It was a really exciting time. I remember we um, had a guy called Roger Forster. I know you've been in his church. came forward. Um, he preached the gospel and said, right, if you want prayer for healing, go that side. If you want to come Christian, go that side. And one of the lovely stories, there are so many stories, but one that sticks in my mind is a, is a, a girl who had a damaged knee. And she came forward and got healed. And then she went back. And then she thought, oh, I better go forward now this side. So then she joined this queue and got uh, converted and came to faith. Um, and, and it was just a very exciting time. I remember praying for someone. I had an ingrown toenail. And I kept seeing them. And I said, how's the toenail? I said, yeah, it's fine. I said, oh, OK. Because I had less faith than he did, I think. <laughs> um, and it was just a time of people coming to faith, uh, of discipleship, of hunger. Uh, and it's exciting, isn't it? And that's what we long for. And the reason I'm, uh, this caught my heart was because although we're still in a difficult time, um, you do see people thinking about God more. We do see people just coming into church, uh, people inquisitive. And it's just that sense of a stirring. And we want to fan that into flame, don't we? We want to pray that into life and work to support that. So this passage this morning talks about John's call but I think also it has a few lessons for us about fanning the flames of revival, what we can do to nurture that and promote that as a, as a church and as individuals. So I'm going to kind of take that tack as we go through this passage. And the first thing I wanted to point out was that these people are being baptised as a baptism of repentance. So quite clearly one of the things they had was a, a repentant heart, a soft heart. Um, the truth is even as Christians we can be quite hard-hearted we become a bit indifferent to the gospel of God, to the, to, to the call to repentance, to, to the things of God. And we need to stir ourselves up and just have a soft heart. Uh, let our conscience be sensitive so that when we do say, come to Jesus, we're, we're soft-hearted, we're not hard-hearted. Uh, and that was true of those people there. They had a soft heart, they were penitent. We know that others weren't. We know that some people refused John's baptism. Uh, and he had some tough words for them. Um, but, but these people, lots of people have that soft heart. We want to pray and maintain a soft heart towards God. That's the first thing I wanted to say uh, that we can learn from here. But the second thing, um, in verse 25, we see an argument developed. And that is a warning to us because that is the thing that can kill God's work, is disunity, the arguments. And it's quite interesting. An argument developed um, over the matter of ceremonial washing oh gosh, you know, why that? <laughs> you know, but because that's what happens, isn't it? You know, um, Christians can, I mean, the great revival of John Wesley and George Whitfield, they actually um, ended up not working as a team because they dis disagreed over predestination, you know, um, which is like, oh my goodness, why do you disagree over that? Well, why not just accept, I mean, they, did, they didn't, they weren't enemies, but it undermines the work of God where people are united, there's blessing. And we need to remember that. Um, it's, it's true that in ancient times, we've seen the archaeological remains, um, they had big water jars. Um, that's possibly why at the wedding of Cana, they had the water jars. Big water jars because they were expecting to kind of wash in ceremonial washings. They had like bapt what we call a baptistry uh, for washing, for ritual washing. This was a big thing. Uh, the, the scenes in the uh, Dead Sea Scrolls, but they had washing places. This was a big thing. And, and obviously there were different meanings attached to it and different occasions when you'd have a spiritual bath so to speak uh, and and it's clearly there's a discussion and um there's a disagreement unfortunately john doesn't start getting into a kind of a disagreement uh, he, the, someone comes to him and says rabbi the man who was with you the other side of the jordan that's jesus he's baptizing everyone's going to him and it's almost like he's trying to create a competition between them and john says no no We've all got our own allocated role, which is my next point. So John didn't fall into disunity. Instead, what he did, which is my third point, is he respected different callings in different ways. He respected that. He said, no, Jesus has got a particular call. I've got a different one. What he says in verse 27 is, a man can receive only what is given him from heaven. Okay, John 3, 27. It's worth bearing in mind this verse, having it in mind. Even if you can't remember it, you know, know it's there, find it. John 3, verse 27. A man can receive only what is given him from heaven. 
Now, that's actually quite liberating because it means what someone else does doesn't have to apply to you. You don't have to compare yourself. You know, God's got a different calling upon me. I preach a different way to Alex. Other people do different types of ministry. You know, we're all different, and that's great. We have a different calling, and it comes from God. Some people are really good like at the, the just come round to welcoming people. Others are better at the cooking. You know, they're different gifts, different ways. We don't compete. We work together. And there's two great mistakes. One is to feel inferior to the other person. And why, what I do isn't as good. And that's terrible. God doesn't see you like that. He, he values your contribution, who you are. He, he loves you. He made you that way. Why would he want you to be the same as someone else? He, he loves the way you are. So don't put yourself down. But neither do you want to think, I'm better than someone else because I make better cups of tea than the next person. I don't know. You know, it's silly, isn't it? That's how silly it is to God when we say, oh, I'm better at this than someone else. It's just silly to God. It's now, you're all different. <laughs> why, why would you want to do that? It's distractive. And we, we can miss out on the joy of God because we're thinking we're not matching up with someone else. Or, or like I say, so, so I think it's a very liberating verse, a very helpful verse. A person can only receive what is given them from heaven. And when you think of it, it's kind of obvious, really. Yeah, I suppose that's true. And the danger as well is that you try and manufacture something and do it in your own strength, and it's not from heaven, and it's going to be pear-shaped, or someone's going to get hurt, because you're doing it in your strength, in your ways. We want to hear from God and do the things of God in his strength, in his ways. So, so far we've got soft, repentant hearts, unity, respecting different callings. Uh, verse 4 talks about joy, not verse 4, point 4. It's verse 29. Um, it's quite an interesting little verse, this. I'll read it to you and then unpack it. The bride belongs to the bridegroom. The friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him. He's full of joy when he hears the bridegroom's voice. So the image there is of, in the culture there, and there were different cultures, in, even within Israel there were different practices, um, but the culture that's been spoken of there is of the best man whose job is to get everything ready and then wait for the groom to come and, and do the wedding. And what he's saying is that, um, and actually he's, he's, what he's saying is that I am not the bridegroom. I am not the Messiah. That's actually what he's saying. That's Jesus. Okay? My, I'm the best man, if you want the marriage. I'm the best man. I'm not the, I'm not the bridegroom. Okay? And this is actually quite pointed um, that the people that were trying to turn John into a Messiah, and some of them were, they sort of, he's the man, were making a grave error. And, and what actually John is saying, it's a bit like trying to marry the best man to the bride. You know? That, that is out of order, isn't it? <laughs> you know? <laughs> That's not what it's about. That's not what a wedding's about. He's the best man, not the groom. Jesus is the bridegroom, and we are his bride. He's come for his bride. And John got that. John has, but he said, but isn't a wedding a lovely thing? Isn't it a joyous thing? This, I've got joy because I'm actually introducing making this marriage happen. The Messiah's coming, I'm preparing it, and you can be his people. And my role is to make that happen. And he's, he's got joy. He says, that joy is mine, and it's now complete. It's complete because he's actually seen the Messiah. Jesus, is, his ministry's taken off now, and he's happy because he's doing his job. He's thrilled that what he's being called to do is happening. It's coming to pass. And he's content, and he's got joy. And when God works, there is joy. I mean, there's joy... Uh, just come round. There's been joy at the Alpha course. There's been joy. Um, you know, there's, there's different occasions when you see God working at the present service. I know Fidelia said she got so full of the Spirit she could barely stand up. You know, she's just at the present service receiving from God, and that's joyful, isn't it? And we want that. So let's let's. And, the, and Nehemiah, of course, has that famous verse: "The joy of the Lord is our strength." Uh, Nehemiah eight, uh, verse ten. Um, the joy of the Lord is our strength. So we want to press in onto the joy of the Lord as well. And then on the back of that, John the Baptist then says, he must become greater, I must become less. And I think that's a, a great truth if we want to see the work of God, okay? If we want to see the work of God, then Christ has to become greater. And actually we have to take the back seat. It's not about us. We have to diminish. We have to decrease. He has to increase. That's what's beautiful about worship. You know, worship isn't about us. That's the opposite of worship. That's self-worship, self-glorification. Worship is about Jesus and God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And we want to honour Jesus in this place. That's why we. Sing. I'm going to ask Catherine and the group to sing that lovely song again, 
glorify your name because we want Jesus to be glorified here. We want him to get the glory and he alone is worthy of that. None of us uh, are worthy of glory. We, we can offer glory and worship but we're not worthy of it. He alone is. He alone is. And I think this is, this is so important. I mean, oh, uh, it was at New Wine and John Tyson, one of the preachers there, gave some really good talks, very practical, wise talks about joy. And, and just, uh, but one of the talks he gave was about revival. And he said, I've been passionate about revival for years. I've researched revival and I've tried to see what the thread was, the different places, different places where the church has grown and God has worked. Uh, and he said, the one common thing I've found is that they were all desperate for God. That's what he found in his researches. There were places where people had kind of reached the, the end of their ability and were crying out to God. And so God moved. And I think that should challenge us and inspire us. You know, we should be hungry for God. So again, it's not about us. It's about hungry for him, for God, for God's work. And then we'll see that among us. He must become greater. I must become less. Are we hungry for that? That's the challenge of today's verse, today's reading. So that's five things so far. Soft hearts, repentance hearts, unity, respecting different callings, having joy, Christ honouring, put Christ at the centre. That's part of the reason why I think it's good that our our motto now is is, uh, to be and to make followers of Christ. It's about Christ, not about us. But the final one I wanted to mention, which isn't in the reading I gave Dolly, I'm afraid, but it's just a few verses later, (laughs) uh, verse 34. Um, The passage goes on to talk about how exalted uh, Jesus is. And John's saying this. He's saying, look, I'm not, but Jesus is exalted. He's he's the one before all things and beyond all things. Uh, He talks about that. And in verse 24, he says, the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the spirit without limit. Um, Different translations put it differently. So this one says, for God gives the spirit without limit. But the Greek is he. So it could be Jesus, it could be God. A lot of commentators would say, actually, it's Jesus that's given us the spirit. Um, But either way, the verse says, gives the spirit without limit. And another danger is we we put limitations on the Holy Spirit, that we limit, we kind of put a cap on it. I've had enough of the Holy Spirit, that's fine. I've got enough. Uh, And we'll stop there. But actually he wants to give the Holy Spirit without limit. Um, I've quoted Alex at the 8 o'clock and I don't know if you remember even saying what I quoted you. But anyway, uh, Alfred, uh, Alex has said how we leak and so we need to keep being topped up with the Holy Spirit. And that's fine. And this verse tells us that there's no limit from God. So he's happy to fill us up and keep because he gives without limit. Uh, The river of God flows endlessly from the heart of God. It's his love. Just as his love has no limits, his power, his grace, his spirit has no limits. So we need to be people that aren't sort of content with just a little mouthful of God, but we actually want to keep drinking from that river and keep thirsty, keep hungering. Jesus said in the Beatitudes, how blessed are those that hunger and thirst for the kingdom of God, for they shall be satisfied. Trouble is we hunger and thirst for secondary things and are content with a trip to the harvester or something. You know, that's fine, that'll do me. But actually, God wants us to give us so much more. I mean, half is nice, but he wants to give us his spirit, his very life, his love in our hearts. And he wants us to thirst for that and hunger for that and then find that. And that's true satisfaction, true joy. So John was f- true to his calling. Uh, I was thinking as I was, I was preparing this, how if you show a job description for John's job, uh, you might sort of be envious at first. Yeah. Ooh, herald to the Messiah, the Saviour of the world. Oh, that sounds quite, I quite like that job. That sounds quite nice. Uh, could be some perks of the job, you know. It's like working for the king, isn't it? Or the queen, you know, you get perks of the job. Uh, but when, when you think about it, when you read the small print, you realize, oh, he lives in the desert, uh, wears camel hair, eats locusts. Um, locusts and honey, was it? Um, Oh, by the way, he will be thrown in prison because he's challenging the status quo. Oh, he does get executed. Um, so, yeah, he said, oh, in fact, I won't have it after we put it back on the, <laughs> won't apply for that one list. Um, but he was faithful. He was faithful. And I think part of his power was that I think he, he disregarded the opinions of people. Uh, he, you know, he, he, his focus was on what is God wanting me to do, 
not what will the neighbours think. You know, he just did what he was called to do and did it faithfully. And I think that's very powerful for us today. So soft, repentance hearts, unity, respecting different callings, the joy of the Lord, uh, Christ honouring, Christ first, God glorifying, and going on in the Spirit, not being satisfied with little, but pressing on, continual thirst for the Spirit. These seem to be things that, that were happening there. Of course, they then led naturally into the ministry of Christ, his crucifixion, Pentecost. The story goes on, doesn't it? This was a moment in time. I think often there are seasons of, of blessing and then seasons of, of more challenging times. Um, but we want to be experiencing that blessing and sustaining that blessing and walking in that. So I hope those, those tips will help us as we do so. So what I want to do now is um, uh, basically we'll all stand, if you don't mind. But if any of those points uh, were ones you felt stirred about, I'll just ask you to come forward. We don't often do that. Sometimes we do that. But if you felt, yes, I need to repent or I need a repentant heart, or if you're concerned about unity, or you're thinking about calling, what is God's calling, and you're perhaps tempted to compare, or if you just need joy, or if you want to put, just put Christ in the centre more, or honour him more, if you just want more of the Holy Spirit, uh, please come forward, and then we'll just get a handful of people, um, any we need, just to come forward and, and to play blessing over you. So we'll make that available. Any of those things you might feel you want, just more of the Spirit, put Christ first, any of those things. Okay, so let's stand and worship, and, and we're still here to, to pray with you before we meet at the Lord's table. Thank you. Over to the band. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>
offertory. Thank you. say our prayer together. We offer you, Lord, these our gifts, the money we offer now and the donations received online. Receive them and bless them in your service. And bless us too, the givers, that with lives laid down before you, we may bring you glory through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. Now, I've got it down as William leading the prayers, but is William here? If not, or is Dolly doing it? Well done, Dolly. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Shall we pray? Dear Lord, we thank you for this Christmas time. We pray for various Christmas events at church this month the Christmas Tree Festival viewing, Christine Good Service, Toddler's Christmas Party, Christmas Choir Performance, Carols by Candlelight, and the other various services and events in the run up to Christmas. We thank you and we pray for your blessings for those who are sacrificing their time and energy to help make this happen. We pray that this event allow us to open the church doors to the wider community and that God's love shines through us to the people who will come and share in the love of Christ at Christmas. May these Christmas services and events be an opportunity for people to meet with God and seek more of his presence in their lives. Lord, in your mercies, hear our prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for the leadership of Christ Church and their families. We thank you for the work they do among us and in the wider community. We thank you for your strength and wisdom for them. We are grateful for all they did for us as their church family throughout the period of the pandemic and since the beginning of this year. We ask that you continually bless them, strengthen them, and we pray for your wisdom and guidance for them as we end this year and move into the new year 2023. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Dear Lord, we thank you for your peace in our land. We pray for your peace in Ukraine and in the areas of conflict in the world. We ask for your help, comfort, and provision for our church family and for every family in the United Kingdom and in the world during this challenging cost of living and energy crisis. We pray for your protection and healing for children and young people against the ongoing invasive group A streptococcal infection we pray for your comfort for families who have lost their children to this infection. May you hear our prayers and heal our land. Lord, in your mercies, hear our prayers. Dear Lord, we remember our governments in our prayers. We ask for your wisdom for them on how to find solutions to the cost of living and energy crisis and the various ongoing strike action in our public sectors. We pray that you will see us through these challenging times. Lord, in your mercies, hear our prayers. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Dolly, so much. So, um, just a few notices, and then we'll have the peace and move into communion. Uh, Thursday, sorry, let's start again. Tuesday is the cafe. I know a lot of you come to the cafe, but this Tuesday we're going to sing carols. So 2.30 and there's mold. Yeah. It was 1 to 4.30 and it says here that there is mold, wine and mince pies. So look forward to that. Woo. Um, also, we're actually hoping to do mold, wine and mince pies at the Christmas carols. Well, I'll come on to that in a second. No, so, so we've got Mold wine and mince pies this Tuesday. This afternoon we've got the Christingle, four o'clock. If you want to come, bring family, do the Christingle, four o'clock. Um, Thursday night, this isn't just for church, there's a, a thing called the Dignity Memorial Carol Service. Uh, uh, the, the funeral directors 
uh, will come and people from the community will be lighting candles for loved ones. Um, if, if, I just need a couple more singers for that. Um, we're just going to have an organ, but they would like a few singers at the front here just to give a lead to the congregation. A lot of people aren't confident singing, so we're going to help them. So have a little word with me afterwards if you might be well, willing to sing Thursday evening. It starts at 7, we'll get here 20 minutes earlier. Uh, to, and it's just familiar carols, but it's giving a lead. So please let me know if you could help with that. So we've got Chris Dingle, we've got the cafe, we've got the carols on Thursday. Next Sunday we've got the carol service, the candlelit carol service at 6.30 should be really lovely. Please invite friends, family. It's going to be beautiful. So we've got a really large choir this year, haven't we? Huge choir. Um, and also, we, again, we need people to help in there with refreshments this time. So please have a word with me if you can help with refreshments after the carols Sunday evening. And uh, if you feel a bit generous, please bring some mince pies and we can share out the mince pies as well. So that'd be lovely. Uh, perhaps let me know if you're going to do that as well. I can make a note who's coming. Um, we've got our alternative Christmas card, so if you want to give Christmas cards to everyone at church, but rather than waste lots of paper, you can put a greeting on there and just put a donation in our charity box towards uh, We Are Beams, a uh, charity for disabled uh, kids. So that's a nice way of sharing a greeting to the church um, in a very efficient, effective way. Uh, lots of other things going on. Um, I'll let you read through. We've got a little concert being planned for the end of January, but you can read that in here. Please read that and, and perhaps put that in your diary. Uh, but I think that's probably it for now, unless anyone's got there's something I want to shout about that I've forgotten. But I think that's enough for now. Okay, so read through and look at it in more detail when you can. So let's move on to the peace and then into our Holy Communion. So let's stand and we'll share God's peace with one another. May the peace of the Lord be always with you and also with you. Let's offer one another a sign of peace. Thank you. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread. He gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, 
which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to join the eternal song of heaven, saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Please be seated. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Prayer of uh, thanksgiving for communion. We say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let's stand for our final uh, song. Go tell it on the mountain. Please stand and sing.
go with uh, God's blessing. Lord, may we go with the joy of the Lord in our hearts, with the confidence of his presence with us, and with his message on our lips to tell others the good news of his love. So pour out your blessing upon us. May we go now with the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless you all. Thank you. God bless.